guys and welcome to RC Shim. Today I'm not in the hangar, I'm on the Eichberg, but I want to do review and test of the Quantum Nova Pro drone. Hoppy King sent me for a review, thanks for this. And I want to find out for you whether this is a good drone or not. I mean it's really cheap. How does it compare to Phantoms and to other drones? and what are the pros and the cons basically. So I hope you enjoy the scenery. Uh, let's get it on. I have two batteries in parallel. And the weird thing or funny thing about this drone is you actually have to turn on the transmitter second. Okay, so this little guy here is my telemetry hub. It sends telemetry it receives telemetry from the drone and can send it over via Bluetooth to my mobile phone. And use the Tower app I downloaded from the Android store. And just connect it via Bluetooth. Of course you have to bind the Bluetooth thingy. Basically I use it for, for battery monitoring. Using right stick down to arm. In the zero mode, those switches on zero, then throttle, then you just use the middle position, you put switch A in position one, which is GPS hold. Uh, something that bothers me a bit is this mid throttle beeping all the time. Oh, I found something to play with. Let's chase this car here. So now I'm gonna try to fly a long and smooth straight as long as I can. With maximum possible GPS speed, which is around 11.5 meters per second. And as you see the gimbal has some jitters, it's not really stable but it can be uh, worked on in post-production, the software stabilizer. Now you see my weird pink head cam. Um, the advantage of flying with the monitor, you can always view if you're still in line of sight, which is an advantage for the video and for the control signal. Okay, we have not much wind or gust today, but the copter flies a bit shaky. That's one of the downsides I found. I mean, it looks good now. Your inputs are okay. can throw it around really nice. Battery is at 50%. Oh, the gimbal freaked out. <laughs> gimbal freaks out, freak outs are not something you want to have. I have 10.8 volts. I used 1100 milliamps. And you can hover at 10, 10 amps. Now I just want to get it to return home. Flipping the switch A to position 2. And watch how it approaches my landing pad here. Hope it works. I will not let it land itself. The, the landing gear is a bit flimsy and I don't trust it enough. And the GPS security is, I mean, I'm a bit too close to the trees. Right, it's off a few meters. Ah. 
I know it's not the safest way to land the copter, but if you're con confident about your flying, you can grab it and support the weight with the body a bit and then just grab it out of the air. I had some uh, conditions where I almost tipped over and this would kill some props. Okay, just from, for the lock, I flew 7 minutes and 32 seconds. This took me 1300 milliamps, which is not too much. Okay guys, so you saw the first flights yourselves. Uh, I'm not too happy with the flight characteristics, it's a bit shaky. And even we had not much of wind today, I mean it's a bit gusty, but the leaves hardly move. Uh, the gimbal didn't look stable enough. I mean it's a cheap gimbal, it's a it's $90 gimbal. And the, the funny thing is, the Quantum Q2D is the same price as the Quantum Q3D which would be a 3-axis gimbal and which would also stabilize the yaw axis which is really nice and helpful but yeah, I mean it's a cheap gimbal and you can't compare it to the uh, Zen Muse that, I, that I'm used to from my Phantom 2 so that's, that's a little trade-off camera quality of course f coming from the Firefly success is very good it's on par with GoPro 3 I'd say return home works I don't really like to land it on the ground with this curvy stuff here, I mean it's forgiving, but it's also, it tends to tip over and it's not something you want to happen, so I mean it's not the safest way, but you can grab it in the air and if you hold it like this for one second it will stop the motors and disarm itself, so at least it's my preferred way to land it One advantage of this craft is its efficiency It flies quite efficient, it can hover in at around 10 amps with the Q2D gimbal with the Firefly and if you really use the recommended 5203 cell battery you should really get I'd say 20 minutes I don't think 25 or 27 minutes like they advertise but 20 minutes should be safe and that's a really good flying time that's, yeah. that's even better than the Phantom 2 I'd say so efficiency cool uh, the price point maybe is the best selling point for this device and if you consider to get into FPV and want something safe to fly and something don't spend too much money if you crash it get this $250 drone without a gimbal just attach a small little FPV antenna save weight where it's possible and you can have really long flying times and can do a lot of practice flying with this drone so that would be a cool application for it. It's also cool if you're into hacking stuff, if you like open source software, because this uses an APM flight controller. This can use telemetry downlink, uplink, uh, two-way communication, and you can have it either on your phone, on your laptop or tablet. As I understood it, I'm not quite sure, there is no iOS support yet. You can even use your laptop with an USB uh, joystick and steer the craft via the joystick which is quite nerdy but can, can be fun so this is one aspect you won't get with a Phantom because Phantom is a closed system it works very well but it's closed like an iPhone and this is more like an Android device where you can have loads of accessories and uh, self-modification stuff with the current competition out on the market I, I'm not sure if this is the best you can get for your money. I mean, if you sum it up, you're around $500 in the configuration I have here, with the camera and with all the stuff. And for $600, you get a Phantom 3 standard, which is superior from flying characteristics. Range is nice. You have a really good cam on the Phantom 3 standard. If you're looking just for a good aerial platform, I'm not so sure if I can recommend this. If you want an easy way into the drone hobby and if you want to like mod to modify stuff and play around with different options like phone or computer, this APM stuff is really nice. And you might even be able to get out this APM of this copter if you're tired of this copter. It's a standard APM in, the, in there and you can use it for other projects as well. So, Okay, so I took my seat because I want to program the app while the craft is still on the ground, set some waypoints and try the waypoint feature uh, down on safe grounds here. Armed. 
Take off, friends. Go away. Go on to GPS mode. Adjust gimbal a bit. The craft is here. And I want to go one, two, three, four, five. And let's see how it does it. So the copter moves to his first waypoint. And I think he will change the, the speed. I set it to go to 25 meters. Or to 30, no, I, I set it to 30 meters. Now it moves to the fourth waypoint. Okay, now it moves to the fifth waypoint. Sorry for it's being German. And the fifth waypoint is 30 meters and circle. I'm now curious to see how it circles there. It should circle in a diameter of 12 meters. And it always looks inside the circle. Something you should remember is to close the battery door after you take off. <laughs> One battery might fall out. Well, it was close. Damn it. And now I want it to follow me. Of course it can't steer the gimbal because it has no control of the gimbal so I have to do this but it's nice you can set the height I don't expect it to follow my height just too inaccurate on GPS as I often told I have 70% of battery so we can still run around a bit You can say lead me. Oh, that's interesting, but that's that's purely APM stuff. Now I told the radius is 10 meters, and I told him lead me, so it should fly in front of me. Um, yeah. Now it turns over, of course. So that's funny. So he struggles not to lose me out of frame. But that's nice. We can have a circle. Now I let it circle myself, which is a nice option as well. So it circles me now in nine meters, which is really nice. I will see if we can head home with the remaining battery in the circle mode. Okay, now as I move to the trees, I will end the following mode now to be safer. Yeah, it was fun. So you hear the battery voltage alarm here. 
Yeah, I really misuse these 25C batteries. Okay guys, so this was a funny morning here on the Eichberg. The follow me mode is cool and it's not because of this craft but because of the options that the APM software allows in follow me mode. You have a leash mode where it's just like, yeah, you're the dog on the leash and the drone uh, guides you or, or the other way around. You can set the altitude, you can have it circle around you in a defined uh, radius, have it lead you so it will fly back and always flies, face with the cam towards you. If you want to end the follow me or the waypoint mission or something that could be dangerous because you see it follows you, circles you around and then circles into a tree and you have to stop this immediately, don't uh, think around with the, with the app because on the app you don't see much if it's bright sunlight it's down and middle and you aborted every mission. So that's really important to... Yeah, and all will always leave the switch B always to zero switch A on zero for takeoff in the center for normal flying, GPS stabilized flying and position two for return home and the conversion to have it send video down was really easy I just had to take 12 volts from the gimbal power cable here and use it for my immersion RC video transmitter that I just glued on the side of the this thing and the antenna was also taped around the leg here so it's always oriented good you have to have a special GoPro cable a flat hat uh, GoPro cable that's important because otherwise it will stick into the motor yeah and the Q2D gimbal I mean what's nice uh, in comparison to the Zenmuse that I also have uh, the lens is always in center which is an advantage so much to the gimbal the gimbal doesn't work at its best, I'd say. It has some shakiness left. That's, yeah, it's just a cheap gimbal. Copter, I like it. If you throttle down, it gets instable, of course. You definitely should get the telemetry system, or else you won't have the fun with the app and all the advanced stuff. Yeah, now I leave it up to you if you rather get this and have a lot to play around, or if you play it safe and get a Phantom 3 standard, if you have to watch the budget or if you go uh, up to the very advanced Phantom 4 or if you would consider the new Xiaomi Mi drone that's been announced it's looking really awesome as well so there are an awesome lot of options on the market there are those unique uh, copters they just brought out the Typhoon H or something like that head over to my friend uh, Bo Lorenzen, the FPV guy he just did a review about it so there are so many GPS copters, so many cheap ones and some expensive ones. Yeah, I hope I can help you decide which is the best for you. If you have some comments, you know where to leave them, questions, I like to answer them. So I hope I can help you and share the joy I have in this hobby. Okay, so thanks for watching. Bye.